Hi everyone, I hope you're all doing okay. I just wanted to start this segment of the video by giving you a quick PSA if you're a spooky person like I am because HomeSense right now in the UK has Halloween stuff. Like it's July and HomeSense has Halloween stuff. Um, this is really unusual for the UK and everything is weirdly high quality. This little vampire, like vintage style vampire figurine was so nice that when I spotted it tucked at the back of the shelf I literally gasped out loud. Um, I, I literally don't know what to say, I'm so excited. Like, if you if you don't know, Halloween is my one of, and like spooky stuff in general is one of my special interests, that's why I'm stuttering all over the place, because I'm just so excited. 
Um, the blanket is like really thick knitted and it's reversible and it feels like it should have cost a lot more than it did to be honest. The ghost pillow is really big and soft like super super soft and it also comes in pink. Like that is absolutely unreal. Um, I don't know how this happened to us. This is spooky. Um, oh my god, the Peanuts oven gloves. They had a whole Peanuts Halloween kitchen range with oven gloves and tea towels and stuff. And I literally just can't believe it. Um, if you're a spooky person, you should get down to HomeSense and to maybe TK Maxx as well, like as soon as you can. I don't know how I managed to hit gold, to strike gold in in July in the UK in HomeSense, but I'm really excited about it. I'm going to keep trying to go back, I think, and checking to see if there's more stuff but literally impeccable. I try to really only buy stuff I can reuse nowadays, um, and this has all been a very exciting addition to my collection. Um, I'm really amazed at the quality. Um, I also just wanted to show a couple of other bits that I got recently, um, in a much calmer tone of voice, hopefully. <laughs> um, I wear the same necklace in every video, you might have noticed, um, and it has three pendants on it, or like three charms on it. One of them is a St. Anthony charm, um, one of them is the North Star, and then, like, I had another random just, like, circle charm, so I took that one off because I ordered a really tiny heart charm from by Nook, I think is how you say it, or just Nook. Um, it's super, super cute. It's a lot smaller than I expected, but to be honest, it layers really well with my other charms, and I think it looks a lot nicer than just, like, the three clunking around. Um, I'll show you the name. Yeah, there you go. You can see the name of the company I bought it from. It's super cute. Um, I also bought these scrunchies and I literally just videoed them because I thought the colours were really cute. Like, I have no other justification, I just thought they were cute. I've been thinking about growing my hair a bit longer again. Um, my hair hasn't been long now for like seven years or something, but I'm kind of bored. <laughs> Not to be controversial, but I'm kind of bored of short hair. Um, but it also just gets in my way when I'm working, so I've been collecting cute scrunchies. Um, and then finally, I'd like to talk about Wednesday for her birthday. Her birthday was last week. It was on the 21st of July. She turned two. I was originally going to make a whole separate video about her for her birthday, but when I did the first audio take answering questions, it was 29 minutes long. Um, and if I'm being honest, I just don't have 29 minutes of dog video footage. And I don't know what I, how I would make 29 minutes. So I thought I would redo the audio and just answer some of the more fun questions and then if anyone wants more in-depth questions I'd be happy to make a video in future about it. Um, I don't really want to be an authority on pet care anyway, I don't want people to google how to look after a dog and find a video I made and then take my word for it because I don't think I have the experience for that. What I want to do is just answer some fun questions about my dog for you guys <laughs> in a very informal way. Um, so for her birthday this year, I got her a tiny cake. I always get her a tiny cupcake. They're really weird and dry, but she really likes them. Um, and because she only has one a year, I figure it's probably okay. She got some treats as well. I got her these new treats to try. And she ended up liking them a lot more than I thought she would. And this bear-shaped thing is a play mat. <laughs> um, on the floor by her crate, she just has like a massive scrunched up blanket that she likes to hide toys and treats in. Um, and I wash it obsessively because it looks messy. It's never dirty, but it looks so messy on the floor that I just wash it constantly. So I thought that maybe if I got her something that looked a bit nicer, like the play mat, then it wouldn't it wouldn't be so offensive. <laughs> um, and she actually ended up really taking to it. She really likes it, so that was a big win. Um, I found it on a like a dog a dog website. You know where you buy things for dogs. <laughs> Um, I didn't really think they were a thing, like dog play mats, but turns out they are. Um, this is Wednesday, he's eating some of her little cake. I only gave her half this day, and then I gave her the other half another day, because she's really small, obviously. Um, but she's munching away. Okay, I'm gonna answer some questions. I'm sorry in advance if you can hear me clicking on my laptop. Um, so, the first question, is she your first dog, and what breed is she? Um, and she is my first dog, um, personally. I always grew up with dogs in the family though, so we had a family dog growing up, um, a West Highland Terrier called Juno, um, and my auntie always had dogs, um, so there's always been dogs in my immediate and extended family. So I didn't go into it completely unknowing, but she is my first dog personally, and I have, I do feel like I learned a lot more this way. Um, and she's a miniature pincher. Um, the next question was what made you choose her? 
So I chose her primarily because I knew I wanted a dog that looked kind of spooky. Um, I think aesthetics were always going to play a role in the breed I chose. Although I obviously factored in the temperament and behaviour and stuff of the breed as well. Um, I knew I wanted a black and tan dog because they look like Halloween dogs. Like, I know that's daft, <laughs> but Halloween is my special interest in case you hadn't realised. Um, so I knew I wanted a black and tan dog for a while. I considered getting a Doberman, but they're huge and they dribble a lot. And I was living in a much smaller space at the time. So I was worried I wouldn't have enough room to give a Doberman a good enough quality of life. Um, miniature pinches, although not related to Dobermans at all, um, look like tiny Dobermans, and so that was a big factor in, in my in my start for the research of the breed, I guess. Um, and then after I read about their temperament and their intelligence and stuff, I thought that she would be a really good fit. And then the next question is, was her name always going to be Wednesday? Um, and I think so, yeah. The only other name I really considered was Echo, um, and I think I briefly considered Autumn, but not really. Um, I thought Echo would be really cute, and I still stand by that as a cute choice, but then I think Wednesday was the obvious choice, because I named her after the Adams family. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> um, is she an emotional support or service animal? Um, no, she's not. I did originally want that for her, and some of you might remember that, but I got her during the pandemic while I was off work and quite burnt out, and because of the pandemic it meant that there weren't as many classes running and stuff at the time, it made it quite difficult to find classes for her. Um, and I was also quite inhibited by the fact that I don't drive, so I wasn't able to travel with her to classes. Um, I didn't expect that to impact me as much as it did, but it really did. Um, so no, it just didn't work out that way. But to be honest, now that she's that bit older and I know her as well as I do, I don't think her temperament would ever have really been suited to being a, a, like a professional service dog. Um, I do consider her a very informal emotional support animal in that she's done a lot for my well-being. Um, but no, she's not. And then someone said the best slash worst things about having a dog. Um, and the best thing is definitely just the relationship that we have. I don't know how many of you have had like a pet of your own that you're the sole caregiver for, but it's a it's a special thing, I think. Like the bond we have is, is really special to me. And we've been through a lot together <laughs> in our two years. Um, I, I don't know how to talk about it without getting really emotional and I don't want to do that. But the best thing is just the relationship that we have and the bond that we have. Um, and then the worst thing um, is that Wednesday has separation anxiety. We're not able to leave her home alone at all. And that is very difficult to manage. Um, we have to bring her everywhere or we have to have pet care for her. And up until recently, when I made a friend who was happy to watch her, um, I couldn't do things like go to the cinema or go to the supermarket or anything, really. Like, I couldn't go anywhere that I couldn't bring her. And it turns out the UK is not that dog friendly. <laughs> um, there are very few places you're actually allowed to take a dog in the UK, like shops and stuff wise. Um, so that's been the hardest thing to cope with. Um... And then someone said, has having her helped you in some way? You said you sleep better. Um, and I do, although ironically at the moment I'm going through my worst insomniac phase that I have done since I got her. Um, so that's funny. Um, but I think I do sleep a lot better, generally speaking, since I got her. I don't know if that's just because having a dog is exhausting <laughs> in a good way. Um, but I do sleep better. She has done a lot for me. She really reinforces my routines as well because a dog has to have routine. Like if you don't feed them on time, they will bark at you. <laughs> um, or worse yet, they will throw up in your bed. So she, is, she has done a lot for me. Um, someone said, do you allow her to interact with other dogs outside? And if so, how do you do this without being anxious about her? Um, and I do allow her to interact with other dogs. She did have quite a long phase. I think it was probably her secondary fear period where she was really anxious around other dogs, but we worked through it with a trainer. Um, and now I do allow her to interact with loads of other dogs because I think it's really good for her well-being. Um, and to combat the anxiety, I just try to keep a really good eye on her body language because that will tell you everything you need to know really about how she's feeling about it or how your dog is feeling about it at the time. And then you can act and intervene accordingly. Um, so that was a long learning curve, but now that I think we're, we're over the other side of it, um, it's a really good thing. Um, and then let's do some more fun ones because I don't want to talk for too, too long um what is her favorite spot for scratches and pets this is crucial information um she really likes if you scratch like behind her ears or just under her ears like on the front of her ears at the bottom like that's where her ears start on the side of her face i don't know how to describe it you'll you can see it in some of the footage i'll try and sync the footage up so you can see what i mean but she loves that 
the other thing she also really likes is if you scratch by her hips or her bum she's a big fan um how silky are her little ears they are super super silky sometimes she gets dry skin at the tips of her ears but then you just moisturize and it goes away but otherwise her ears are so silky like can confirm very silky ears um fave thing to do together i think we'll just be going for nice walks or taking a big nap um, these are underrated dog activities. Maybe they're obvious choices, but they are literally just the best. Does she have any quirks? Our dog barks at popcorn. Um, the funniest thing, or the most interesting thing we've realised recently, my dad and I have realised, is that because we're quite sensitive to her barking, and she seems to recognise that, she's sort of, like, developing new noises. So instead of barking, she'll just, like, chirp at us. You know how if you have a cat, a cat will communicate with you by making funny noises? Wednesday is now communicating a bit like a cat that talks. Like, sometimes if we sass her, she'll sass us back by, like, chirping or making weird noises at us instead of barking, and it's honestly amazing. It's really interesting to think about the way the, the way an owner and a dog communicate with each other. Like, obviously, will evolve and change over time, like, and is unique to each person and each dog. Like, that's... It's mad. Um, does she like swimming? She's actually never really been swimming. Again, because of the pandemic and the fact that I don't drive, I've not really had that many opportunities to travel too far with her. Um, we took her to Wales for the first time last year, but we didn't go to the beach. Um, but I'm hoping that in the future, this is something we'll be able to explore together. Um, her favourite comfy spot is definitely either in her crate. Um, she really likes lying on the back of the sofa like a cat. <laughs> um, sometimes she sleeps under the bed like a cat. Um, otherwise, she just likes to hang out in all her beds, to be honest, um, or on my lap. She's a bit like a cat crossed with a dog, to be honest. It's really interesting. <laughs> um, does she have a fave toy? Um, and the answer is yes, definitely. She really likes the carrot patch toy, um, or just like a tug rope. Um, and she has these little ghost toys too, and she makes you throw them for hours, and she really loves chasing them. Um, they came from like a hide and seek toy where you put the little ghost inside like this big pumpkin and she just loves it. She really loves it. She just carries them around the house and she has been for over a year now. Probably one of my best purchases. <laughs> um, what's her favourite food? Um, and the answer to this one is definitely apple, which is really weird, but she loves little bits of apple. Like if my dad has apple for lunch, she just sits by him waiting and waiting and he gives her little bits of apple and she loves it. I don't know why. She's gone off most other fruits, but she loves apple. Um, and then the final question is, does she know she's the best girl? Um, and yes, I really, really hope so. <laughs> um, I do tell her every day, so I hope she does know. I don't know if you can hear, but she's in her bed snoring right now. I can't. I actually can't. Literally iconic. <laughs> um, and that's all the questions I'm going to answer because I don't want the video to be too, too long. Um, but thank you for your questions. Let me know in the comments if you want me to do a more in-depth video about care for her and about how she impacts me as an autistic person. Um, because as I said, it took me 29 minutes to talk about it all last time. Um, so let me know. Um, otherwise, see you soon.